welcome B Stellar crew. Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Alex. This is David. In this episode, we're going to talk about distractions. David, what do you think about distractions? <laughs> it's easy to get distracted. <laughs> what is the major distraction these days that keeps people from being uh, from becoming stellar? Oh gosh, man, let's talk about the main one. Um, social media. Cell phone. In all honesty. No, like, I, I agree 100%. Um, not saying there's not always been some sort of media distraction, because back in the day it was the newspaper, right? So, uh, you know, they've got that photo out there of, you know, like they're talking about everybody being on their cell phone and they show a picture of everyone being on, in the newspaper. No, well, there were. That's how yeah, it was. And to a certain extent, all of that is good. But to the point of, like, me and my kids went to Northwest Arkansas, or me, not me and my kids, me and Taylor, me and my daughter, to return some stuff, and we had dinner down there, and I was looking around, and there was this couple there, and the husband is literally just staring into space, and the wife is just on her phone. They're not having a conversation. I don't know if they ever had a conversation at dinner. dinner. Yeah, because I was watching them. Are they texting each other? No, he never was on his phone. He was just literally like just in space. Like, dude, I've met people that they stand next to each other and they fucking text instead of talk to each other. Probably because they're talking about something they don't want everybody else to hear. Sketchy, bro. Doesn't matter. Sketchy. You sketchy. Say it. The distraction, though, man, it's easy to get distracted from your goal, especially in the entrepreneurial life. I actually had a conversation with. one of the guys that I'm in business with this morning, because, you know, financially, you can get distracted financially, and rightfully so, because, like, when you have bills coming, and you have $300 in your bank account, and you're an entrepreneur, dude, that's a distraction, because you keep thinking about it. What what are you, what are you supposed, yeah, and because what are you supposed to do? You know what I mean? Like, well, and that's the reason a lot of people quit. This is what we had a conversation about. That's why a lot of people quit. Because in entrepreneurship, it's all future money. It's all, okay, I made a bunch of money, but it's not going to be here until next month. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, so what am I going to do now? And you have to have the discipline to continue on the path forward, knowing that you just made a pile of money, but you have to wait on it. And it's a lot of calls, man. It's a lot of calls to collectors, to bills, saying, hey, I don't have it right now. This is where I'm at. And you'll find that if you'll call your bills, that they're pretty easy to work with. I understand. That if you call them, if you communicate and say, hey, listen, let me give you 50 bucks this week. That's literally all I have. If you try to draft that auto pay, it ain't there. You know, I've had to do it. But it's a distraction because it makes you want to quit. And it makes you want to go get a different, just to go get a job to where you can budget your money. Even though it's not much money, you know it's coming in. Versus your dream of being self-independent and knowing. So cell phones, the media, gosh, like right now we were just talking about it just a minute ago. If I paid attention to what's happening in politics right now, I would be distracted. Dude, last night, um, it was like 10 o'clock. I had an appointment. It got canceled. I'm like, let me see what's going on. Canceled or ghosted? Canceled. Oh, good. Canceled, yeah. Not ghosted. Uh, You know, 15 minutes before the appointment, they let us know, like, hey, uh, we're not showing up. I can't show up tonight. I'm too tired. For all of you ghosts out there, boo on you. (laughs) So, anyways, the guy cancels, and... I'm on my phone, and I'm like, you know what, let me just look at TikTok real quick. Let's see what's going on with elections. So I go on YouTube, and I'm like, election results live. Pops up, and I'm like, oh, my God, they're still in the election again. So I'm like, all right. And then the news is very, very good about keeping the, 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 the thing just moving forward, like grasping your attention and just for you not to let it go. And it was like midnight. So imagine this, I'm sitting there for two, that's never happened to me before. Like I've been on TikTok before for like five minutes, ten minutes at a time. Maybe sometimes when I take a break, eat lunch, you know, if I'm by myself in my house, I don't hang out with wife and kids, they're doing something. I'm just taking a, you know, a lunch break, maybe half hour while I'm eating, you know, scrolling through. Um, 
But that's like two hours, man. I wasted two hours of my life for something that I knew how it was going to go anyway. Right? And I was like, man, this is freaking like, what am I doing? You know, I woke up this morning, guess what? I was glued to the phone again. Because I don't know what it does to you, but, you know, you're like looking at this and you're, like, you're watching your country crumble in front of you and there's nothing you can do. You know, because that's crazy. To people in more power, you know, they, they control everything, right? So, and then you know, I didn't vote, like we talked about this election. I didn't vote. You know, I, I mean, I'm in Missouri, bro. Like we won every single Missourian candidate that we wanted to win won, right? So I'm good. Um, but all these other places, man, I, I was just looking. I was like, how is that guy? How is this woman? Like the chick from Arizona, you know? And it, dude, it really took me down the rabbit hole, and I was literally distracted. Two hours last night. And about three hours this morning, I just could not take myself off the screen. And I was like, what am I doing? I still got to work. You know, so like I got up, I made breakfast. I woke up at 4 a.m., by the way. I couldn't sleep. Um, so, uh, you know, I got up. Um, I made breakfast, washed the dishes, you know, did all that stuff. Wife had to take. But, uh, yeah, man, cell phone. Cell phone, social media. Um, I would say probably is the main reason why people are not successful. You know, I, I watched one of the motivational speakers, and he goes, you just, actually, I think it was E.T., Eric Thoma. Yeah. He said, if you drop your cell phone, <laughs> you will be successful. <laughs> like, just it, drop it. it. Has don't, its, don't be on it. So it has its place. I think it has a lot to do with discipline. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Because we can get so distracted by things. And, you know, they say that the greatest show of self-love is self-discipline. That's true. Because if you can make yourself... Go against your own like bodily will. Initial if that makes things, sense, initial right? Thoughts, yeah. Yeah, like to people who eat healthy that don't want to eat healthy, people who get up and work out that don't want to, yeah, but they do it. People who get up and go to work, even though they don't feel like it, it's all a show of like it's self love, it's love for others. Because you're doing it for a greater purpose than how you feel. Dude, emotions are junk. They really are. Oh, you're wrapped up into that stuff, man. You're done. You know, emotions can be a distraction. Because if you allow your emotions to rule, emotions to rule you, to rule your relationships, because, dude, there's times where you're angry at your loved ones, but you love them. And so the initial, which emotion do you go with? Love isn't based on an emotion. It's based on an action. Because to be angry at someone and still love them is to put away your anger and love that person. I think there's a lot of relationships that fail. A lot of marriages fail. Because people just don't, they really don't know how to love each other. It's all emotion. It's all how do I feel at this moment instead instead of saying, hey, let me take a second. I'm not you. You're not me. We have two different brains. Let me try to put myself where you're coming from so I can understand why this upsets you, why this makes you angry. When I get mad, I do my best to never say a word. Yeah, don't ever make decisions or speak when you're acting out of... But you can't take back what you say. No, you can't. You can, even if it's... I mean, you never, you can never take back what you say. Like, you can just not care. You can not care, but I'm talking about if you love somebody, yeah. you don't want to hurt them. You want to tell them how you feel, and you want to get your point across. Well, it's, if something's the truth, but that's different. You don't have to throw in a bunch of words like "stupid" and "idiot" and you know you're a moron and all this stuff. You can tell somebody, and if that person loves you, they'll take the time, whether then or when they calm down, to hear you, and hear your side, and then you guys work on that together. That's how you stay married, is, yeah. it's okay to get mad at each other, it's healthy, it's but okay, it's right. okay, but understand that you're in this together, and so in the same thing with business, like, man, sometimes you just gotta take a second, and regroup, And then go back at it because you've been distracted by the wrong things, focusing on the wrong things. Because we get focused, sometimes we get so focused on making money that we forget why we started doing it in the first place. We know a lot of people, um, 
They say if you don't work on yourself, your business will never be successful. Most people, when they make a mistake, they work on a business. You don't work on they work in the business, that's what I meant to say, in the business. They don't work on the business, right? How do you work on the business? You don't really work on the business, you work on yourself. Once you develop yourself, you run the business, you're going to get new ideas, you're going to try new things, you might hire new people, you might go to a place you would never go before, uh, maybe meet contacts you never, you would have never met before, and then your business is going to take off anyway. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, it's not even the business, it's you. Mm -hmm. It's A lot of times, it's you, man. Um, it's... You know, like financial services, we always talk about it. Why are we not making millions of dollars when there's some people making millions of dollars? It's us. It's self-development. Yeah. Um, maybe we're distracted. Let's figure out what works and what doesn't. Well, we all, we all, in a sense, like the hardest part, I think, is to break away from that immediate gratification thing, right? Um, for me, that's what it was. Uh, immediate gratification. Like, I want things now. But things don't happen now. Sometimes you got to work for them, right? Um, and there you go, distraction, well, right? It's on silent. Phone ringing while we're on a podcast. My wife went to the doctor today. <laughs> I was trying to make sure it wasn't her. It's a distraction. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it is, It is though. Like like I said earlier, you're worried about, you got to look at future money. You know, like this year may be terrible, but next year may be the greatest year of your life if you don't quit. That's it. Because... Just like anything, success comes through perseverance and hard work, and the effects of those things come later, delayed gratification. Okay. Whereas Arby's will pay you the same day. Same day? Same day. I need to go get me That's a job. That's immediate gratification. Can I go apply? I think you just walk in and get behind the register. I don't think you have to apply anymore. You just really? go in and, no, I don't know that for oh, sure. Okay. I was, about to I was say just saying, you just walk in and get behind there and write your name down. And they, you, then you just take the money out of the register for the day when you leave. Do they even train you these days? And then you can have a place to stay at the county jail. <laughs> <laughs> because you robbed Arby's. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> wow. wow. They do pay the same day. That's not a joke. There's a couple of them that are paying the same day. So wait, it is a joke that you can go in there and then just take money out of the register. That's don't do that. Unless you're in California, then I think you can do it. <coughs> yeah, don't worry. I'm sure they're paying a district attorney. They're gonna let the client. Come Dude, I watched out. a video the other day about this homeless guy in San Francisco. And San Francisco is paying him six hundred forty-three dollars a month to be homeless. Yeah. He said it's a choice. He said Home, being homeless is a choice. He said they pay me six hundred forty-three dollars. Why wouldn't I? It's like, oh, man. Jesus. Well, he's got enough for food. No wonder, he sleeps on the no wonder it's all, yeah, no wonder it's all for, oh, and they get $1,100 in food stamps. That's more money than I get for food. And I work. <laughs> Wait, so he, he gets paid $600 to be homeless, and then $1,100 for food stamps. Something like that. So yeah. $1,700 a, a month, month yeah. goes to a homeless To be homeless. Wow. There's um, one homeless guy. You want to know why, you're, you're, you know why it's, it's important to live, or it's, uh, Expensive to live in California? Yeah. There you go. Well, San Francisco is ridiculous, man. I was um, I was supposed to well, get stationed in San, San Jose. That's Pelosi's area. Yeah. Well, I was supposed to get stationed in San Jose, California, which is right by San Francisco. I was supposed to go to Waianae Reserve Duty Station. I got orders, actually, to go there. And I told the wife, I was like, hey, we're going to San Francisco. She's like, what? What kind of base is over there for Marines? I was like, it's a reserve station. So I go over there, and I look, and BAH... Uh, basic housing allowance, right, for, for the military, BAH. Okay. Uh, it's like basic allowing for, uh, allowance for housing, for housing or, something. or something like that. Yeah. It was like $4,600, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's on top of your pay. Like, why is this so much? So I go look for like a one-bedroom apartment, because, you know, I need a, I had a year left to get out of the Marines, so like, because it was like one-bedroom apartment, like 3600 bucks. Mm -hmm. Well, in San Francisco is where they're doing the, uh, they're trying to get people to open their homes to teachers because they don't pay the teachers enough. The oh, teachers can't okay, okay. afford to have a house. And so, so they're trying to... in the basement? So you can rent a room in somebody's basement or, or whatever, however that works, um, so that you can still teach. Dude, yeah. you got to love teaching to live there. Jesus. Yeah, man. Well, you want to be stellar, don't be a teacher. <laughs> no, be a teacher. No, but man. it just sucks because... I would hate to be a teacher. We just don't pay them enough. It's not even about the money. Mm, it's about... It's you got a little some, bit about you got money. Some, Rats, 
that haven't been raised right, entitled little shitheads running around. Yeah, but they stand up in the middle of your classroom until you go, you know, screw yourself. I know, yourself. but I commend teachers for, for trying to teach the young generation. There has to be somebody. Yeah, but that's not called parents. Yeah, but they some parents are read and do math. Some parents are stupid. you can find the Google. Yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, like, can you do seventh grade math now? Yeah. No. Have you seen There's it? There's a book. Mm. Yeah, but you, you get a book just, and you go through yeah, it. Yeah, but you couldn't just do it right now. Bro, well, most of those teachers can't even do it. That might be true. So I'll tell you something right now. I was in honors, honors trigonometry when I was in... Um, I never had to take trigonometry. Or like trigonometry <laughs> or whatever it was. It was something, but it was some... It was one of those problems where it's like across the whole board. It's like X minus 2 plus oh, Y. so bad for you. Parentheses times 16 <laughs> minus 3X, right? It was like across the whole board. And, you know... You know, we come from Serbia. Me and my buddy, he was Serbian dude. We're sitting there and we're looking at this teacher do it. His name was Hill, Mr. Hill, uh -huh. right? And he's doing this math problem. And me and him are looking at it like, he's wrong. Like, that doesn't make any sense. This guy's got a bachelor's degree in whatever, you know, he's teaching us. And we're looking, I'm going to tell you right now, like our schools in Europe are more, way more advanced than American school. Mm -hmm. They just are. Uh, and I was like, I've done this in like sixth grade. And I'm like junior high school, and I'm going pretty much th learning things over. Yeah. Right? I look at it, I look at him, I'm like, bro, this is wrong. And he raises his hand, he's like, hey, uh, excuse me, teacher, that's wrong. He's like, it's not wrong. My buddy's name was Milos, right? Like, it's not wrong. I'm like, yeah, it is, it's wrong. And you see some Karen, you know, from the phone classroom, Mr. Hill knows what he's doing, he's right. And we're looking at him, like, he's definitely not wrong. He's especially like, he like divided like a circle in three and he's like, this is 50% and this is 50%. And we're looking, he's like, what's the other third? You know, it was just like, it was wrong, right? Uh, and then me and him start throwing money on the table, right? I'm like, five bucks is wrong. <laughs> then we got kicked out. We were told to switch classes. <laughs> we wow. couldn't stay there. It was the beginning of the year. It was like our first week there. Oh my gosh. And they sent us to a different class. So I never took trigonometry, never took calculus, never took anything like that. Dude, I never studied, and they put me in advanced stuff. And I was I'm, always I'm in like, honors. I'm like the dumbest person when I come around people. I was people. in honors, like science, and history, yeah. and things like that. But, and honestly, like, how many times have you used trigonometry? No, it's either all that shit. Wait, you never, time, used, you never used trigonometry? I don't know. Did I? I don't, I don't know. know. That's why I'm asking you. I use basic math. Do you have calculus? So I own a construction company, I read a tape measure, uh -huh. and I add and subtract fractions uh -huh. a lot, and multiply, and divide. You know, the normal math stuff. Yeah, regular math. I do that all the time. So I probably use algebra, not knowing I'm using algebra, I probably use algebra a lot. Yeah. And some geometry, you know. Um, but if you, if you wrote a problem all the way across the board... Dude, I would be doodling on a piece of paper because... You don't need it. You're never going to need it unless you're like a scientist or some guy that does like chemistry or math, physics or something like magician. that. Or like, yeah, dude, you don't need it. It's like, so I like how um, Henry Ford did it. Right, Henry Ford, he, got, he was taken to court for something. And there was some, at that time, there was some type of case that was in courts. And they compared what he was talking about to that case. And he's like, I don't know that. Like, what do you mean you don't know? Everybody knows about it. He's like, yeah, I'm not everybody. I don't care about general knowledge, what everybody else knows. I care about specialized knowledge. What do I need to make me successful? And everybody looked at him like, okay. You know, like, that was, that's in the book, Think and Grow Rich. But, yeah, man, you don't, you don't need to know everything. You just need to know specialized knowledge. Like, the field you're in, study that. Don't study other stuff. Like, I remember studying ge uh, geography, and it was like, the percentage of sheep export in Switzerland. Like how many sheep does Switzerland export every year? We might come up with a conversation. Dude, <laughs> conversation, when am I ever, I, dude, I haven't mentioned Switzerland in the last 10 years, bro, like as a country. Swiss cheese. Yeah, it's, yeah I mean, when I go to Subway, I'll take Swiss cheese. At first time I didn't know what it was called and I was looking and I was like, I'll take the one with holes in it. <laughs> the lady started cracking up. Oh God. Yeah. But yeah, but, you know, distract like. So, are there distractions? And I and I, I think we get distracted in school. My kids go to public school. Your kids are homeschooled. Yes. I love that my kids 
have, I think public school teaches you more real life when it comes to dealing with people. Whenever I was in school, we had homeschool kids come, you know, to join public school. They're smarter than everybody else. Because that's all they do. They're at home yeah. studying. Well, this well, is the thing. I met, well, 99.9% .9 of people that I know are public school, yeah. right? And 0.01% of people that I know are homeschooled. Mm -hmm. And the ones that are homeschooled, guess what? They're anesthesiologists. They're lawyers. <laughs> Okay, they're doctors. That's why I don't know them because <laughs> they're just that's not the people yeah, I hang out with. Private right? school or something so stupid like that. No, dude. Okay, you gotta listen for for those of you guys. Go to a YouTube channel, find business athlete. Okay, he's one of the guys. He's in our business, and he says private or public school doesn't matter. They're both designed for the same thing. It's for the society to make you an employee. Yeah. Right. So private school, you just overpay, and you going. Pretty much with nicer people, but you're doing the same thing. Well, and you do learn a little more. You, they do they do advance Probably a do. little more, um, but it's the same stuff. It's like trigonometry, and yeah. you know what I mean. But like, and no, like it might give you a little more attention because maybe classrooms are smaller or whatever, you know. But it's, I think we got distracted from being talking about distractions. Is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see, see how easy it is. No, no, it's really easy. You know what's a big one of the biggest distractions for me, man, is going back home. You know, I moved. Um, I moved from my moved out of my parents' house when I was 22. Right, I was a little older. I didn't move out at 18. That's when I joined the Marines. I left home, and when I was on a bus going to boot camp, I told my buddies I'll never come back because I lived in Southside Chicago and I didn't like it. I hated it. I hated the fact that my car alarm would go off every night because somebody's trying to break into it. Yeah. I hated the fact that I got shot at one time. Some guy cut me off on a stop sign, and I hunked at him, and he stopped. That was like. 17 year old kid, you know, so I take off and this dude backs up and starts chasing me and fire shots at me The only time I've ever been shot at is when I go to the doctor <laughs> <laughs> Well, anyway, they don't I go they don't miss either So when I was yeah when I was leaving, you know, Chicago, I said I'll never come back So obviously I go visit because that's where my family lives But I go there man. It's, it's just distraction like I love my sisters. I love my nieces I love my nephew. I love my mom and dad right all that stuff But dude, I go and I'm nothing but distracted I come back and I start thinking regular thoughts, like regular, maybe I should go get a job. You know, everybody has a job. Oh, I got my car, I just paid off my car. I don't care about a paid off car. You know, I don't care about a paid off house. I would rather be on a side of the road in a tent, okay, than go work for somebody again. I just, I, when you go over there, you hang out with them for three, four days. And like I said, I love them, I just, I just can't, man. I come back. The first couple of days, it takes me like a second to readjust and, and focus again on what I need to do. And I told my wife, we talked about this this morning, and I told her, I was like, I don't know when I want to go back again. Every time I go back, like I talk to my dad and he's a fucking loser. And because he's a loser, it's like everything I do, he's questioning. I'm like, why are you questioning me? Question yourself. You haven't done shit with your life. <laughs> you know, why don't you question yourself? So... Uh, yeah, man, it's, it's a big distraction when I go home, being around family. And that's why they say most successful people, they move away from family. Yeah. Because I don't want to go, like, I love my nieces and nephews, but I don't want to go to every birthday party. I don't want to go hang out with my mom and dad on weekends every weekend. I want to work and grind. I want to come up with different things. I want to read books. I want to self-develop. I want to take a class. I want to do something that benefits me, my wife, and my kids. Something that's going to take me in the direction of building a family wealth that I can pass on to my children. Working for somebody for 40 years and having a pension and die broke and not pay, not pass on anything for your kids, that's not building nothing. Right. It's a waste of time. So I would rather struggle. And, and that's why when I go home, they're all like comfortable. You know, they all got decent jobs and they're all comfortable. And, you know, as you know, we're not comfortable. <laughs> no. Right. We're uncomfortable every day. Not yet. And you go over there and I go over there and all I hear is, you know, what do you got? Oh, I just work, you know. I hate my job. My boss is this. This company passed this policy. I hate it, but you know, I gotta comply with it. No, you don't. Do not comply. Yeah, quit the damn job. Go start a business. You know, I made a TikTok video. It actually gained a little traction the other day. Um, I said, you know, ask yourself some questions. You know, what am I doing for a living? Like, who am I doing it for? Who am I building the wealth for? Purpose, man. Purpose. Like, what is your purpose? What is your purpose? Yeah, what is your freaking purpose? What is your why? Like, what are you... You don't have a why. You know, I think 
one of our your your agents said this the other day. Yeah. In a team meeting, you know, and, and we've talked about it. Yeah. But like, what is your why? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? What are you doing? Discover your purpose. Try different things. Yeah. It's okay to fail. It's and okay giving up means doesn't mean giving up is just stopping altogether. Yeah. Switching an idea yeah. to try something else isn't giving up. It's, it's okay. just saying, okay, this didn't interest me. That's like eating. You try a food and you don't like it. You don't just quit eating. <laughs> you go get what you like. You go find something you yeah. like to eat, right? Yeah, the same the thing. thing. Find yeah. something that works for you, that's that it. makes you money, that you enjoy, and keep switching until you find it so that you can feed your purpose. Yeah, it's okay to Quote start that. something. Write it's that down. A, okay, yeah. I'm going to put <laughs> David Wire it. Um, it's okay to start something, not like it, stop it, and go start something else that you think you might like. It's okay to do that. It's freaking okay to quit your job. It's okay to work part-time on your business. It's okay to tell your family, fuck off, leave me alone, let me fucking grind for the next 10 years. That's okay. It's okay if your friends fall out of your life. Because they're our biggest distraction. That happens. I don't want to chill on Netflix. I don't want to freaking barbecue every Friday evenings, watch football games and shit like that. That's a distraction. So, yes, but do make time to enjoy life a little bit. Yeah. This is how I look at it. I can mediocre, enjoy my life for the rest of my life, or I can just put my head down, grind with no enjoyment for 10 years, and then after that, do whatever I want for the rest of my life. If you remember how to do things that you want to do. No, you always remember how to barbecue. It's not that hard. <laughs> but but you, you, know, you know what my relaxing thing is? What? You know what I like to do? What? And it's with nobody. It's by myself. I grab my chainsaw. I grab a couple of axes. I put them in my trailer. I go in the middle of the woods. And I knock over like, I don't know, 74 tree. That's what I love doing. Like I go over there, I put in my big headphones on. It's cold outside. I love it. I only cut wood when it's cold outside. I just love being outside when it's cold. I hate being outside when it's, when it's freaking uh, dry and sunny and warm and all that. I like it when it's cold, snowing, or raining. That's the best it's time to be in the woods. It's sweaty <laughs> and gross outside. That's my jam, Yeah, bro. so, anyways, I go out there, right? <laughs> I grab my chainsaw, I start I start the thing up, right? <laughs> Cut down some trees. Load up the trailer. I got heated floors in my house. So that's what I do. Yep. That's how I heat them, right? With the wood. And I, dude, I, I throw some headphones on. I'm telling you, I throw in a motivational speech or I throw in a book. I turn it all the way up so I don't hear the chainsaw. And I'm just cutting, dude, for like two hours. Like, that's how I chill. Dude, I love listening to books. Love listening to books. I like reading better. So, depending, depending, okay? I like reading motivation. I like listening to books. Does yeah, that make sense? Way around. Like, so I like, because I like to listen to, you know, uh, just different kinds of books out there, right? That aren't necessarily motivational, but they're more healthy for my mind than just straight music all the time. Um, so, like, dude, I've listened to, like, through Audible, listened to, like, 20 books this year. Because I do it when I do construction. Yeah. I just get tired of listening to music sometimes. Dude, and so, that's annoying. if I can listen to, like, a six-book series on Audible, they're, like, 40 hours. Yeah. But I'm working. I've got my headphones in. Noise cancel. You know, got them in. Just doing whatever I'm doing. Just listening to this book, dude. And I'm... Yeah, I love it. I do. I, I just started doing this like two years ago, and it's the best. Gets like, you in the groove, man. Yeah, Gets but dude, groove. I'll tell you what, the narrator is everything to me. When I'm trying to listen to a book, bro, if... He has to have a good voice. <laughs> I'm telling you, to. one of the ones I listen to, um, he can do a voice for every character in the book. It's so That's good. That's pretty cool. But it ruins it, because what I'll try to listen... It? Oh gosh, I don't know. Um, I just finished... A book series, what is it called? I'm trying to think of the whole, the, what the series is named. Um, the the narrator is Tim Gerard Reynolds. So like I said, these aren't motivational books. They're like fiction. Uh, okay, so the dork stuff. Dorky stuff. Okay, like Lord of the Rings and all that crap. Heck yeah. Jesus. I don't see I'm in business with a dork. I'm allowed to like what I like. Yeah. Welcome to country. America. It's a free country. Do whatever you want. Yeah. Don't nope. put your views on me, okay? No, you listen to whatever you want to listen to. I don't care. 
that's what I like listening to. It's like, that's my relaxing time. I'm still grinding. I'm still working. Because if I'm listening to a motivational book, I want to listen and really take in. That's the reason I like to read it. Because I, that's something I want to take in. Yeah. I want to take in and I want to put it and semen it into my mind. So what motivational stuff do you read? That's a lot of Christian stuff. Oh, okay. Um, a the lot Bible. of... <laughs> I, I do read the Bible every day. Um, so like the Bible... Um, Word, there's a, Tony Evans is a really good writer. He, he has a book called um, Watch Your Mouth, talking about what you say, what you say about yourself, what you say to others, things you put out into the air. Um, Gene Edwards has a book, book called um, The Three Kings. It talks about Saul and David and Absalom, and their, which is their biblical characters. And Absalom is David's son, Saul is the king before David. Saul is always trying to kill David. Absalom is trying to take the throne from David. And it's about the attitude that you have as a leader. Are you always afraid someone's going to try and take what you have? Are you trying to always take what someone else has? Or are you just trying to lead? Or are you trying to do your best? It's, a, it's like 90 pages. I've read it like four or five times. It's an amazing book. Nice. Um, stuff like that. Stuff about leadership. Um, lately, I've been reading, you know, read Tax Free Retirement by Patrick Kelly, uh, read Retirement Miracle, you know, things that help me in business, um, stuff like that. So those are the kind of motivational the books I read. One more. Yes. Yes. One more um, thinkers. <laughs> yeah. By what? So yeah. So I mean, I do. I listen to a lot of, but and if I'm like I said, I have to take it in though. Like if I'm trying to motivate, like educate, I have to be able to take it in. I can't be distracted by what I'm working on because I'll stop working and listen. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I'm like, I'm really interested in self-development. So, oh, this really applies to me. And all of a sudden, I'm not tiling the shower anymore. I'm standing there looking. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Because yeah, yeah. I'm trying to take it in or I want to write something down. So, I don't listen to motivational stuff. I just listen to, to me, it's, it's books or music. Well, that's, neither, a, that's a good way. And to neither, and neither, like as far as listening, and neither one can really like help me, like a motivational book would. So it's just something, just noise. But I do enjoy listening to books, like like yeah. Age of Myth is a good book just to listen to, and it has a whole series. Like I'm on like the eighth book of the whole entire thing because I nice. just listen to it because I'm a dork, straight up. I don't mind it. That's fine. I still watch cartoons sometimes. I do too. I'm 34. No, I do it by myself. Yeah. Oh, straight up. I watch, uh, me and my kids we love Tom and Jerry, Bugs Bunny, any Looney Tunes. The ones where they used to be super violent to each other. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's the best. Yeah. The old school ones. The like old school ones. Like, like the uh, first ones that uh, came out. Me and my kids. Pop Pop. Right. I'll tell you the best show on regular TV right now is Science Max. Have you ever caught it? Mm. It's on. Uh... That's a distraction, bro. No, dude. It's, you learn about science, man. I hate science. <laughs> you can't hate science. Well, Everything is science. I'm science right. made your clothes hey. and your coffee. That's fine. Appreciate. If you're going to hate, at least appreciate science. Anyways, he does. I appreciate it. He does projects and talks about. Dude, it's a great show. It's educational. With all the crap that's on TV nowadays. Yeah. You know nothing you watch well, I on watch, TV. I watch everything, Kardashians, bro. Everything. <laughs> can you keep up? No, Jersey Shore. <laughs> that's my favorite one. <laughs> But everything you watch no everything you watch today is a distraction. <clears throat> There's an agenda to everything that you watch on freaking TV. Well, oh, that's true. Every new show that's out there that comes out has some sort of stupid agenda. Like I'll be watching it and I'm like, I just want to turn this crap off. Like, why are they trying to force that on my worldview? Like that doesn't even ha that, that doesn't apply to the show. Period. Why yeah. is it in here? Yeah, Let's turn this off and. Do something else. Let's go play Trivial Pursuit and learn something. You know. That's why lately I don't really watch TV. I just when my kids either. are watching cartoon and if we're hanging out and just watching cartoons, I'll watch cartoons with them. It's family time. But I would rather I would rather go outside, jump with them on the trampoline, or I take my son into the woods with me. Like, yeah, let's go. No, I can do a backflip on it. I can do a backflip. It hurts yeah. my back though. So. I have a I have a bulging disc and three or three bulging discs and a ruptured spine though. Yeah, so it kind of. I got a few things wrong with my back, but yeah, I don't think 
it doesn't do it. Like I can jump for a few minutes, but like if I jump for a while, like it it'll hurt. So distraction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, everything's everything's a distraction, man. We're, we're so distracted with everything. You know, I'm gonna tell you right now. Like my kids watch cartoons, man, and dude, they have so many commercials and advertisements for kids. And they're bad advertisements. Dude, we would be we would be in Walmart. They have agendas and, in those too. Bro, we'd be in Walmart, and my daughter goes. I want this, and I'm like, "What the hell did you hear of this?" She's like, "Oh, it was on Ryan." So like this. What's Ryan? This, this little kid. He's got a YouTube channel. He's like seven. How was that kid? Kid's already like multi million. Oh yeah, he's richer than both Dude, of us together. His toys are in Walmart. Yeah, I think that his parents started a YouTube channel with him. Yeah, that's all. It and was. he, they just like filmed him, filmed him playing with toys. Yeah, that's it. That was it. And kids watched him. Yeah. Oh, I feel so bad for this generation. Good for that kid. No, he's worth millionaires, but it still sucks. Like, why didn't I film my kid playing with toys? Yeah. Because I was like, I want my kids on the internet. That that's it. That's it. Because that's my mindset. It's like there's so much bad out there, and I have two pretty little girls, man. But that that's the thing though, like, because I was thinking about starting a YouTube channel for my daughter. So what if I start a YouTube channel and my daughter does like gymnastics shows, like. Girls, because you know, she's she like the, the other million that are out there now, huh? Yeah, but yeah, it's the thing, it's, it's something like everything great is gonna have some type of but, you know, and I think that that has to have. Um, nowadays, they've switched television shows for social media channels, people become invested in other people's lives. Do you know what I'm saying? Because, like, you know, used to, you know, I can't miss my stories. You know what I mean? Like you still listen to like old, like older people talk about soap operas and stuff. I can't miss my stories. Shh. You know, because they don't have DVR. But now, instead of people wanting to catch um, a TV show on a weeknight, everything's so available, Netflix and all that stuff. Oh yeah. That now it's like people follow people on TikTok and Instagram and all these stuff because they're involved like a TV show. People's lives have become a TV show yeah. because what's the next episode? Well, yeah, where yeah, are they going to go next? Dude, some of these people make a lot of money, dude. Like, you can spend millions of dollars from YouTube. Uh, millions. Mm -hmm. And not, not like dude, like Joe Rogan podcast. is like 35 million. Dude, that's insane, dude. 35 million in one year. Just put a mic in front of you like this. Million, and, yeah. and, and, and just talk and about it. And he just things. brings on whoever he wants to bring on. Whoever yeah. he's interested in. I listened well, to him the other day talking about... He has like, a lot of famous people come on. Though. Well, yeah, but he like he'll read an article... Or read a book or something yeah and like if he finds that person interesting he tries to contact them to have them come on the show so they can just have a conversation yeah that's where I want to be with this yeah that'd be nice I'd love to just pick people's brains mm -hmm. it'd be awesome you learn from people man I love learning from people that's the best way I hate if I can just hang around successful people instead of read I would rather do that yeah well you are who you hang out with yeah me and my daughter had that conversation. Yeah. But you, me and we had a conversation last night, me and my oldest daughter, about the things you watch and the things you listen to. Yeah. That you, that's what you'll become. You know, because, uh, you know, we don't cuss in my house. And I don't really allow music for cussing. But I asked her last night, I said, the kids in your school cuss? She said, oh, yeah, all the time. Yeah. When I was her age, I cussed like a sailor. Yeah. She's 13. Yeah, I still do. I still did when I was 13, uh, before I got in church and started loving Jesus a little more. And, you know, she started singing at church, and I explained to her, you know, when you're on the platform, when you have a platform, you have extra responsibility because you can't get up there and sing and then not be what you say you are. I said, that's how you lose people. I said, so you have to be as real as you can be. And if you don't want that responsibility, don't sing. Yeah. Don't get up there and sing. Sit in a pew. Because regardless, as, as like as far as church goes, we're all Christians. Um, but if you're in leadership of any sort, if you're seen by everybody, you kind of live in a glass house. You know, I've had people say to me, well, you're a preacher. And I'm like, well, you're a Christian. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you're, you're as responsible as I am to look like Jesus, be like Jesus. Just because I have a platform doesn't make me any different than you yeah. in the fact of being aware of my surroundings and the things I say. But at the same time, I do have to be aware. 
because I do preach. And so if something, if I do something wrong and all of a sudden that gets out, I've just ruined that whole platform. I've ruined that whole platform. Yeah, you ruined your reputation. People do it all the time. Think about all the famous people that have to apologize for stupid crap they say, even if it's true. Why would they apologize? If you're... Because they're under the media under stuff. The thumb. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's the thing. What yeah. Kanye, you know, yay, listen to what he's yeah. saying now about the way that the media, the media treats them. Yeah. You know, his manager quit him, his agent quit him, and all this stuff. And I don't necessarily always have to agree with everything that he says, but I do see what he's talking about as far as, like, what? you know, Jim Carrey came out on Jimmy Kimmel talking about the Illuminati. Yeah. You know, like, it's that, do that crap's there. You have yeah. all these people coming out and saying it. Like, so it's, they apologize because if they don't, they're not going to get any more jobs. They're going to get canceled. Yeah, that's how it works. So, I don't care about being canceled. Uh, well, we're just starting out. Oh, yeah, by the way, we're actually worldwide. So I wanted to thank everybody from Austria, from Serbia, Colombia, from Colombia, from uh, there was a couple more countries, Australia. Um, yeah, those are pretty much in the United States. So we have about five, six. Countries Kansas City right now. has our, has the most at the yeah. moment. Kansas City has the most downloads from our Woo-hoo. podcast. So we appreciate you guys. Move out to Kansas City. Yeah, <laughs> keep listening. Keep listening. Yeah, tell your friends. Um, refer us. We're gonna we're gonna we have bring a website. some more people on. Yeah, we have a website, right? Yeah. So bestellar.org. Uh, well, it's not published yet, but not published. We're working on getting yeah, it published. It, it's coming. It's gonna get published soon. Bestellar.org, and it's gonna be our nonprofit organization, uh, mixed in with our podcast, right? So we're gonna be taking donations, and we're gonna be doing something uh, for entrepreneurs with that money that we get. And obviously, as we go up, we're gonna motivate people. And, uh, take him with stay us. motivated. Yeah, stay motivated. Conquer your mind. Stay yeah. motivated. Stay focused. Uh, Don't get distracted. Distractions. Don't get distracted. Yep. It's easy to be distracted, as you can tell from if you're listening to this podcast. Yeah, well, <laughs> how easy it is to become distracted just by randomness in your life. Yeah. Um, if you get distracted, get back on track. You yeah, know, as soon as possible. The sooner the better. Yeah. The sooner and the just better. work at it. Don't forget to be stellar. Tune in next time, and have a great week. I'm David Weirich. I'm Alex Ostoich. You can find us on actually my personal website, alexandrostoich.com. It will be in the comments. Spotify, um, YouTube. We'll Spotify, YouTube, Apple, Apple Podcasts. Yeah. Uh, we're on uh, iHeartRadio now. Your best friend? Your best friend listens to us? <laughs> maybe. I don't know. They might. They <laughs> maybe, might. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> if they don't, they will. Yeah. And also, uh, the podcast is on my apparel website, blackeagledesign.com as well. Uh, so if you guys want to go on there, you can listen. I got some good apparel. If you're American, I think you're going to like it. And that's pretty much it. That's all we got for you guys today. Uh, to be stellar, do not be distracted. Simple as that. Tune in next time. Thanks. Have a good one.